Hi friends, my name is Claire and you've stumbled upon Porch Coffee, so please stick around. Hi friends, my name is Claire and this is my channel, Watch Out Theory. Here, I make content about what it is like to live as an adult on the autism spectrum and whatever else feels good to me. So if that feels good to you, sounds good to you, or if you're feeling particularly gracious today, and I hope that you are, please go ahead and click the subscribe button, ring the bell. I almost forgot to mention that I put out videos several times a week. Click the like, click the like, except last week because there was only one. Hi everybody, how are you? I am so sorry that I've been MIA for the past week since last porch coffee. Ooh, the wind's really blowing outside. I missed you, but it's just been really busy and I've got some family stuff going on because I'm traveling. I'm here in Pennsylvania for my grandfather's memorial dinner. So, surprise? I don't know. I guess I didn't talk about it, but here I am. You might remember that he passed a few weeks ago or that I had a loss. Sorry, not weeks ago, months ago. I had a loss of my family a few months ago. And uh, yeah, our whole uh, immediate family is in town for the memorial dinner. We had it last night. So that's what I've been up to. Traveling across the country, dealing with fatigue from that. How are you? I missed you guys. And I always love porch coffee. It's like my steady thing of the week. I wake up on Sundays and I have coffee with you. If you're new here, I do this every week because when you're on the autism spectrum, it's hard to have friends. And sometimes it's nice to just sit and have a cup of coffee with somebody. What I couldn't do today is update you guys on Mug Club. I'm not going to go poking around to update the Mug Club uh, poster because it's not with me. Forgot it. Sorry. Not very good at planning things like that. But I think we're at 42 or 43 this week. So uh, if you don't know what Mug Club is, if you have porch coffee with me every week, you could purchase one of this beautiful mugs from my website, which is theory.com, and uh, have coffee with me on Mondays. Not Not required. It's just a fun thing. I'm trying to remember all the things that happened this week, but I don't travel well. And I've talked about this in other videos before. When I was younger and masking all the time, I would try my best to make sure that like, I would just suck it up and, you know, I would travel and ignore how I was feeling. But as a diagnosed adult, I don't travel well. <laughs> um, the trip was long. I did sleep some. And uh, since I got here, all I've been doing is sleeping. If, if my parents aren't around, I've been sleeping. I've been sleeping a lot, but it, I don't feel well rested. And uh, that's really fun. But today, I feel better than I have since I got here. I'm going to yawn. Sorry. So rude. So rude. Um, also, if you're new here, I film these as soon as I wake up in the morning. So that's why I look like this. And that's why I yawn a lot. Or maybe I yawn a lot in real life. You won't know. You just have to take my word for it. Yeah, so I got here on Thursday night. And then I went with my mother on Friday to do some yard sailing. And then yesterday I slept most of the day and then went to the memorial dinner at the end of the day. Tonight, today, whew, I'm tired guys. I don't travel well. I, today um, we're all meeting as a family to have lunch. And then I have no idea what else we're doing. So yeah, it's been an interesting trip. We're gonna eat at my favorite restaurant today. And I cannot wait. It's just like a local 
diner kind of thing. And I'm going to get a Reuben because I get a Reuben everywhere I go. You know, I never used to think, that's a great thing to talk about. I never used to think that I had like a repeating same foods that I ate. Because in autism a lot you'll hear about people who eat the same foods over and over again. Like comfort food. Uh, maybe comfort food, is that the right word for it? Because comfort food can sometimes just mean like safe food. That's what people call it. Safe foods. But I also don't like to uh, pick things at restaurants. Like I don't like the stress of having to find a new food that I'm going to like at a restaurant. And then I'm always worried I'm going to be the last person to figure out what I want. So instead, if they have a Reuben, I'm going to eat a Reuben. If they don't have a Reuben, I'll move on to the second thing on the list, which is some anything buffalo chicken. And if they don't have that, I'll probably get a burger. But if I'm at a place that serves Reuben, I don't really need to look at the menu now, do I? Because I know exactly what I'm getting. Saves time. Saves emotional energy. And will it be good or not? It'll probably be good because it's corned beef. I wonder what you guys got up to this week. I know in the comments last week, some of you were telling me that you were getting ready to do your autism assessment this week. And that's a huge deal. So I hope that it went well. I remember when I did mine. I was a mess. I did a few meetings with a doctor a video chat and um, I was just so nervous, especially at the end where it was like, today they're going to tell me if I'm on the spectrum or not. And I had this like fear that maybe they were leading me on for money, you know, like what if from the first meaning the doctor knew I wasn't on the autism spectrum and then met with me three or four more times just for the money and that he was going to tell me and that they were going to tell me that I was not on the autism spectrum and then I'd be like well give me my money back because <laughs> as you know uh, autism assessments private autism assessments are very expensive and I just didn't know what to think about it so and I felt like the doctor was very like straight faced and I couldn't get a read. I know, surprise, surprise. I couldn't get a read on what the doctor was thinking. So I totally get if you're getting your autism assessment right now, and I know a lot of you are, it's very stressful. You're not sure what's going to happen. You're worried that you're not going to, that you're going to mask or that they're not going to see the autism in you. And you really want some affirmation about how you've been feeling. So totally get it. So just know that all of us in the community are with you if you're going through your assessment. I was hoping that once I got to Pennsylvania there would be snow because last week there was snow here. It's already all melted. There's just been some rain and I already have that in California so why did I come all the way out here to see more of the same? The only thing that is really different out here is the uh, how the trees are. Like growing up in Pennsylvania, I'm used to just a different kind of forest than they have in California. So I like driving around here because I don't know, I find the way that the trees are comforting because it's how I grew up and where I spent my most time. Childhood is really weird because it seems like the longest time of your life, but it's not because you don't have any other experience up until that point. So the first few years seem like, well, I guess they are the most important as far as development as a person, but they seem the longest, even though I've been out of childhood longer than I was in it. Interesting. Interesting. I mean, there's also the whole thing of autistic people. So from my impression of what other people think or what I've read is that autistic people can mature slower, but I don't think that that's fair. Like, so maybe time seems longer, but I don't see that that's fair to assess it like that because compared to what <laughs> we mature slower compared to neurotypicals. And I just don't like 
comparing myself to neurotypicals all the time, it's not fair because it's, it's not the same. I have a different brain. So I probably mature just as fast as any other autistic person and develop just as fast as any autistic person. And we're all different. I mean, I've met neurotypical people that don't seem very grown up. I have a deep tired, the fatigue tired of airplanes. I just don't bounce back like I used to. <sighs> and uh, I don't like doing the trip from Pennsylvania to California because it's all day. Several planes all day. So much tired in me. The fatigue. What's this? Oh my gosh, guys, I didn't even mention. I might have another video coming out next week that I filmed last week and I just didn't have time to edit it and put it up before I left. Um, and I will have longer hair in that. But look, you can't even tell because I'm sitting. I cut off my mullet, guys. I totally forgot to tell you. So I guess in other videos, when I'm not sitting down, uh, you'll be able to see the haircut. And I think that you'll like it because I feel so much better. I encourage you if you've been waiting to get a haircut and you haven't, it's so hard when you're autistic, man. It's just this like, okay, no, I need to do something. It takes me so long to get anything done. Like, okay, I want to do something. Let's do it. And then like it's six months before it happens because um, it just has to be the right time and the right moment and uh, it has to get bad enough. Like I just, I want to be better at that where I'm like, I could just get a haircut every two months, have it scheduled, but that takes forethought and planning. Uh, I'm having an amazing time with my parents. They're so cute as usual. I'm so glad I could be here for um, my mother during this time because obviously it's not easy to lose parents and I don't even know what I would do. I can't even think about it. My mom is so important to me. She's one of my best friends and I love my dad so much. I know that they're not going to be around forever and that's terrible. Ugh, thinking about death is the worst. Um, but we're not going to dwell on that because they're alive now. So, um, I'm just so happy I could be here for my mom and help her through this experience of the memorial service, dinner, etc. So, um, I'm glad it's over though, because it's been a point of stress for everyone for a few months. So I'm just glad to be here to support her. Um, what I did want to talk about is that uh, my mom loves mushrooms and now her whole house is decorated in mushrooms this season. And I even have, I guess that's not a mushroom, but this blanket's covered in all different kinds of fungus. <laughs> and uh, it's so warm. She's like, oh yeah, I ordered it from California. And I was like, oh, I don't doubt it. Because where else would you buy a blanket covered in different sorts of mushrooms? Uh, one of her hobbies is to go, uh, when they go on hikes, they love to go on hikes, my, my parents. She loves to take pictures of the different fungus that she finds. And uh, it's pretty cool. She learns the names of them and... Uh, Maybe not the names, but she'll, you know, she'll share the pictures and show what she's found. And it's always cool to see different formations and different types. So, um, this season at the craft store, Joanne, uh, you know, all the craft stores, they put out, uh, decor, seasonal decor. And in fact, most of the store is seasonal decor at all craft stores now, um, this season at Joanne, all of the decor they put out for spring, or at least a whole aisle, was mushroom stuff. And my mom took advantage, and now a lot of the home decor that she's picked out to freshen up the house for spring is mushrooms, and I'm here for it. I have to take pictures and send them to my friends, because I also have some friends who love mushrooms. So I think they'll really enjoy seeing her decor. Um 
choices. I know a lot of other people I've met through autism groups too are interested in mushrooms and foraging. I would be really afraid to learn foraging though because it's it's like a life or death situation. <laughs> if you're into foraging, please in the comments let me know, number one. And number two, let me know how do you get over the fear of death <laughs> and getting sick. Like how do you... Maybe it's, it's probably the OCD in me and the need for certainty. How do you get over the fear of like, well, that looks like this, but what if it's this? How do you become that comfortable? Or is it that you just work through the fear of death? Like you see these people on the survival shows and they're like foraging and eating berries and stuff. And I'm sure that they're experienced and they know what they're doing. So how do you get to that place where you start eating things from the woods and you're like, oh, okay, that's totally fine. Like, for example, there's a flower that popped up in my garden and I read or I saw that you can use that flower to make lemonade, like a special florally lemonade. And I know that that's the exact flower. I know it. But then there's something in me that's saying, don't do that. You could die. So <laughs> if it's wrong, it could be really bad, even though I know with absolute certainty that it's right. So how do you get over that fear? Let me know. I don't know when my next video is going to be out. It'll be sometime this week. I am so glad that you sat and had porch coffee with me in Pennsylvania. Um, I know I have a subscriber. I have several subscribers who live in Pennsylvania. and You've told me that before when I'm in the area to visit my parents. So hello. You don't know that we're close together, but we are. <laughs> um, I grew up here, so if feels like home and I'm happy to be here. It's just so gray. Pennsylvania is really gray in March. So I wish that I could see it like snowy or green, but instead it's just gray. Anyway, have a wonderful day. I love you so much. And let me know in the comments what you're up to and I will see you next time. Bye guys.